From a sophisticated diamond heist to a Hollywood bank robbery in Sweden, each person chooses his or her own path to wealth. Some prefer to work hard, some buy lottery tickets and hope for luck, and some believe that the best way to get rich is to commit a robbery. Many criminals act too trivial and reckless when robbing, breaking into banks wearing masks, and threatening everyone with guns, which often ends in failure. However, there have been a few bandits in history who have pulled off robberies so skillful and unusual that they can rightly be called genius. Today we will tell you about the most ingenious and daring robberies in history. We warn you in advance that we in no way approve, praise, or support the actions of these criminals, but only familiarize you with their stories. Let's go! Number 1. Diamond Theft in Antwerp The Belgian city of Antwerp plays an important role in the jewelry business. A huge amount of uncut diamonds pass through it, often up to 80% worldwide. This information is used by many criminals who try to get diamonds in this city, but not all of them succeed. But Leonardo Notar Bartola and his gang not only stole a huge amount of diamonds from this city, but also did it very beautifully and ingeniously from the technical point of view. A couple of years before the robbery, Leonardo had rented an office in the center building and rented a safety deposit box. Under the guise of a diamond salesman, he went to work every day, while a tiny camera hidden in a ballpoint pen recorded everything that happened. In addition, thanks to the front company, the intruder gained access to the magnetic keys. On February 15, 2003, during a weekend, the perpetrators taped over the lenses of the video cameras and switched tapes, which concealed their actions. Although the vault was protected by 10 types of security technology, including infrared and magnetic sensors and a lock with a huge number of combinations, the thieves broke into the vault. They robbed 123 boxes out of 160, the jewels in which belonged to 70 individuals and organizations. There was so much loot that Leonardo and his gang couldn't even carry it all away. The entire floor was strewn with fallen diamonds. Afterwards, they managed to leave the scene of the crime unnoticed. It is estimated that that day they stole diamonds worth between 100 million and several billion dollars. However, the robbery cannot be called perfect. The very next day, Leonardo Notar Bartola was arrested, as were his accomplices. The criminals did not give away their stockpile. The whereabouts of the stolen diamonds are unknown. The bandits themselves were sentenced to long terms. Leonardo was given 10 years and his accomplices 5 years each. Number 2. The Most Spectacular Robbery Often criminals try to commit a robbery quietly, so as not to attract unnecessary attention and not to be seen. However, some criminals apparently think it's too boring, so they make a real show out of the robbery. One such show took place in Sweden in September 2009. The criminals pulled off a robbery in true Hollywood style. They hijacked a helicopter beforehand and landed on the roof of the bank, from where they broke in through a window. Next, they snuck into the vault, blew up the safes, and took as much money as they could. While the police cordoned off the building, the robbers were already hoisting the loot onto a helicopter with the help of a special winch. Sometime later, they flew away from the scene of the crime. The whole operation took about 20 minutes. During this time, the robbers managed to steal, according to different data, from 5 to 116 million dollars. The exact amount is unknown. The police could not pursue the criminals. The helicopters did not have the opportunity to fly out of the airfield in the suburbs of Stockholm, because on the doors of the hangar was suspended bag with the inscription, BOMB. As it turned out later, it was a fake. The chase on the ground also failed. The patrol cars could not rush in time because someone had scattered steel hedges on the roads leading away from the bank building. As you can see, the criminals had thought of everything in detail. Despite this, the robbery was not perfect. The police managed to get on the trail of several criminals and arrest them. As it turned out, there were 20 people involved in the whole operation. The trial for the robbery which Time magazine included in the top 10 most audacious in world history, began in August 2010. The 35-year-old helicopter pilot and one of the raiders, who broke into the vault building wearing a mask and carrying a machine gun, received the longest sentences of seven years each. Most of the other participants in the crime received lesser sentences, averaging between a year and five years in prison. The location of the money has yet to be discovered, 
Number three is an unusual French heist. This is the oldest robbery on our list today. Back then, there wasn't as much incredible technology as we have today, but that didn't stop this robbery from being one of the most unusual, daring, and somewhat hilarious robberies in history. The mastermind behind the French heist, which took place in Nice in 1976, is traditionally believed to be former military man Albert Spajari. In fact, the true mastermind has not been found until now. After his retirement, Spajaris conceived the bank robbery and got together with former colleagues from the special services to help him. By the way, it is their professionalism that can explain the fact that after the robbery, no one but Alberto himself was detained. The accomplices calculated that the bank vault, which they were going to rob, is located just a few meters from the sewer collector of the city. They decided to dig an eight meter long tunnel and also to cut through a meter long iron concrete wall and special metal barriers to access the vaults. It should be noted that they had tested the alarm system in advance for sensitivity to vibrations and sounds. One of the gang members deposited a mechanical alarm clock in a storage locker. During the night, it went off but the alarm system didn't. The criminals realized it was time to act. On July 16, 1976, after two months of preparation, under the cover of noisy city festivities in honor of the day of the capture of the Bastille, the criminals went to work. The robbery was a success and no one noticed the criminals, but apparently the grand success was not enough for them. So they decided to have a picnic right in the vault, leaving behind leftovers and empty bottles of wine. After celebrating, the criminals made off with $35, $36 million in loot. Before leaving, they left a kind of autograph in the vault, in the form of the later famous phrase, no guns, no hate, no violence. As already mentioned, only Spoyari was caught, and only a few months later. But even then, the story took a new turn. Spoyari managed to escape directly from the courtroom. He jumped out the window and sped away on a motorcycle prepared by his accomplices. He was never seen again. Thus, none of the accomplices of the robbery of the century in France was actually taken into custody. Brazilian robbery in comfort. Banks have always been a particularly attractive place for robbers, so it's not surprising that there have been so many robberies of these institutions throughout history. However, only a small fraction of these robberies can stand out as anything unique. One such robbery occurred in 2005 in Brazil. The criminals targeted the central bank in the city of Fortaleza and began to develop a plan of action. They didn't want to break into the bank because it was risky and stupid, so they decided to get clever. Three months before the operation, the criminals rented a cottage near the bank, from where they began to dig a tunnel straight to the vault. A landscaping business served as a cover for the intruders, so the neighbors were not surprised by the tons of earth being removed. As a result, in three months of work, they managed to dig an 80-meter tunnel, which they furnished with full comfort. They equipped it with ventilation and electricity and reinforced the vaults with wood and plastic. On Saturday, August 6th, they broke through half a meter of the vault, disabled the alarm system, took the money and fled undetected, leaving behind only a punch, a soldering iron and wire cutters. It is estimated that the criminals took out 3.5 tons of money. In total, the loot amounted to about 70 or 80 million dollars. The exact amount is difficult to say. After the incident, police spokesman Wo Batista Santana said that the robbery in Fortaleza was the highest profile robbery in Brazilian history. He was also forced to admit that the actions of the robbers deserve to become a script for a movie. It should be noted that some of the participants in this crime were subsequently caught and convicted. Number five, a major museum robbery. When it comes to robberies, everyone thinks of either banks or jewelry stores. Understandably, both are full of valuables. However, banks and jewelry stores are not the only places that can be robbed to raise a lot of money. In many museums, for example, there are a lot of expensive exhibits, selling which you can get millions of dollars. That's why museums get robbed too, just less often. But when they do, it becomes a very high profile event. And here is one of them. On the night of March 18, 1990, two men in police uniforms knocked on the service entrance door of the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston. They said that they had come to a call, got inside, and immediately allegedly recognized the guard who let them in as a criminal for whose arrest they had a warrant. The false police officers disarmed and handcuffed this and a second guard who came to help with handcuffs to a pipe in the basement. 
Subsequently, they freely took out of the museum 13 exhibits of famous authors – Vermeer, Rembrandt, Manet, Degas, and others. Leaving the museum, the criminals erased the recordings of video cameras so that they could not be identified. As a result, they managed to steal exhibits with a total value of about $500 million. It was the largest museum robbery in U.S. history. The case of the Gardner Museum robbery was and continues to be handled by the FBI's top officers. Despite the fact that 30 years have passed since the crime, there is no special progress in the case. FBI employees, as well as ordinary citizens interested in the process, only work out numerous versions and even put forward conspiracy theories regarding the theft of paintings. Thus, according to one conspiracy theory, secret Vatican agents were involved in the museum robbery. According to another, militants from the Irish Republican Army were involved. According to a third, sheikhs from the Middle East had a hand in it. And according to a fourth, American billionaires were behind the theft. Either way, these are just theories and theories. For many years of investigation, FBI employees had to deal with both different suspects, and with dozens of intermediaries who acted on behalf of people who allegedly had valuable information about the kidnappers. The FBI has searched for paintings not only in America, but also abroad. But in 30 years, neither the kidnappers nor the stolen goods have ever been found. For providing information on the location of the stolen paintings, the FBI is obliged to pay $10 million. As for the museum, it continues to work, but there are still empty frames hanging in place of the stolen works of art. If you liked the video, please support it with a like. And to see more interesting videos, subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.